city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. How could you get sweet talked into a spot like this? I, I just can't understand it. No, I think you've got it all wrong, Mister Don. It's kind of honor, and I'm just proud to know, Doc. Mm. Oh, now don't listen to him, Chester. Just hold up that looking glass while I try this thing on. How's this? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a little bit to the left. Now hold it, hold it right there. <laughs> You're not going to wear that. <laughs> well, now, what's the matter with you? You two are pretty smug. <laughs> well, now, Doc, you... Anyone with an ounce of brains knows that an umpire wears a stovepipe hat. Well, yes, but that's Arthur Meeker's undertaking hat. And it happens to be the only one in town. Looks like to me that Meeker's trying to promote a funeral. Uh, well, uh, let me look at this again Yes, you're right. Yes, I hate to admit it, but it does look kind of silly. <laughs> well, we've won one point anyway. Yes. Uh, Chester. <laughs> yeah, Doc? Maybe you'd step next door to the depot and see if anything came for me on the evening stage. Why, well, sure. Uh, what were you expecting? Well, I sent back to the Brooklyn Eagle for a copy of Chadwick's Rules. Rules? Why, you've got the boys' book of games. The rules all in there. Chester? Yes, sir? Don't argue with the umpire. Oh, sure. But anybody knows the rules. Oh, he expects to be an empire if he don't know the rules. Huh? Oh, Matt Chester. Uh-uh. Matt, what in the world have you got such a long face for? You're not really expecting trouble. Uh, yes, I am, Doc. But why? I just can't seem to get it through your head that baseball isn't the same game you keep talking about. It's changed. Well, the rules maybe have changed, but it's still a gentleman's game. Why, back east, the Saturdays I spent watching the Knickerbockers and the Mutuals... But those were businessmen, Doc, playing for a keg of beer and a little exercise... These are professionals. I know that, but what about it? Look, even if you can keep the gamblers and the hoodlums and the drunks away, the the fanatics, the fans, as they call them, are always stirring up some kind of a ruckus. Mm -hmm. And if none of them cause trouble, the chances are the teams themselves will start a free-for-all. Well, I'll admit we do have a few hotheads in town who might carry their loyalty a little too far, but I don't think... Oh, hello, Mr. Winston. Hello, Marshal. Hey, Doc, why aren't you over there? Over where? At the Long Branch. Now, Lindstrom, why should I be at the Long Branch? The whole Eastern team is there, and we got to have our meeting with them. Well, that meeting's supposed to be at the Dodge House at 9.30, isn't it? Well, and if you wait that long, you're going to have to stack them like cardwood and haul them there in the buckboard. Well, he was there all right. Oh. Hello, Mr. Lindstrom. Oh, hello, Chester. And Chester, uh, did you get it? Yeah. Agent says it's been there for two days, and what you want... And never mind, the... never mind that, Jeff. Just give it to me, please. Well, I'll just tell you what the agent said. Uh, that, that, uh, Lindstrom... You meet me at the Dodge House in 20 minutes. Where are you going, Doc? Where do you think I'm going? Oh, it's starting already. And I'm coming with you. Well, that heat man's supposed to be left. Come on, Chester. We're going to the Long Branch. Uh, yes, sir, but I thought that... Just was... come along. We're going to give Doc his first look at the Eastern All-Star Professional Baseball Club. <laughs> Now, 
I know he's supposed to be the manager and all, but Mr. Lindstrom sure is taking this game serious. Well, anything he does, he takes serious. Maybe he's going out of his way. Oh, uh, what's he done now? Uh, you know, he went clear up to Fort Dodge last week. Yeah, what about it? He talked Colonel Whitfield into releasing four enlisted men for the game. He said they'd strengthen up the team. Players? Yes, sir. Four men he heard about that played with Dury Suez during the war. Oh, did you hear that, Doc? Four men from that 165th New York infantry team playing for Dodge. I heard it, I heard it. It'll, it'll make it a better game. There's certainly nothing unethical about it. <laughs> the All-Stars take anybody from anywhere as long as they play good ball. Well, that may not be unethical, but it sure shows Lindstrom isn't thinking of this as just a friendly exhibition. Yeah, Matt, you're sure doing your best to scare me off. Now, Doc, I'm just trying to bring you down to earth. Maybe a look at the All-Stars will do it. Come on. walked in that door when you did. I was just going to send for you. You mean the Eastern All-Stars? Uh, you can call them that if you want. I've already thought of a hundred better names for them. Yeah, they're pretty loud, Kitty, but they're not armed. Yeah, they're not fighting. Oh, I know. Like their manager says, they're just playful. Well, if it gets any worse, I'll stop them. <laughs> but I brought Doc over to take a close look at the gentleman athletes he's going to be umpiring tomorrow. Oh. Uh, how about finding us a table, huh? Oh, sure. <laughs> How's this table, Matt? Oh, that's fine. Uh, three beers. Huh? I'll bring them to you. Well, Doc, now you just relax and look them over. I like them, Doc. Them fellows sure do look rough and I see how they look, Chester. You know, it's not too late to back out, Doc. Um, I am not going to back out. Here you are. Three beers for three gentlemen. Oh, thank you, Kitty. Thank you. Oh, my lamp. Look at that fellow over there. Boy, he looks like he's been teasing a wild horse from behind with a sharp stick. Yeah, look at that face. No teeth in front, a squishy nose. I'm only guessing, but I'd say he has to be the catcher. And them fingers. Huh. That left hand looks like a branch of gnarly oak. It, all right, all right. Every profession Why, has its I price. Tell you, yes, there's just a lot of fooling. Well, Doc, there's one of the hotheads I was talking about. Where? Over there, Ziff Williams, talking to one of the players. He sure is red in the face. Yeah. He's wearing a gun, too. I'll be back. Oh, boy. Now, look here. I wasn't making fun of your boys. I wonder if you dance as good as you talk. Well, you take off your gun and we'll see who does the dance. Why? You All right, that's enough, Ziff. You. You the manager of these players? That's right. Manager and pitcher. What's your name? Asa Granville. All right, tell me, Granville, what did you do to get this man so riled up? Well, nothing. He wanted to bet on the game, and when I offered him fair odds, he, he got mad. Is that right, Williams? There wasn't no bet. There was a brag about how good the All-Stars are. Marshal, he wanted to bet on Dodge to win. And I laughed because I'd be stealing his money. Yeah? And then what? Well, to give him a fair shake, I offered to bet even money that we'd score at least a hundred. Uh, Williams, I think this man was saving you from making a fool of yourself. Nobody in town except you and Lindstrom really thinks Dodge has a chance to beat the All-Stars. That's all you know about it, Marshal. I got faith in our boys, even if the rest you ain't. Well, I can't stop you from having an opinion, Williams. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you plan to be at that game tomorrow, you better check your gun at my office till it's over. Now, you better get on home. Well, thank you, Marshal. Uh, I've done a lot of arguing in my time, but... I'll never against a gun. Well, I've done you a favor. Now I want you to do me one. What is it, Marshal? You seem to be the only sober one of your crowd, so see how fast and how quiet you can get your boys out of here and over to their rooms at the Dodge House. <laughs> I guess they were getting a little loud, weren't they? Yeah. Ah, they should be getting to bed anyway. And when you get them put away, just remember that you still got a meeting in the lobby at the hotel. I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay. All right, boys, come on. Come on. Kitty, 
I think this place will start to quiet down in a few minutes. Huh? Thanks, Matt. Chester. Yes, sir? You stay in case Kitty needs you. I'm going to escort Doc here over to the Dodge house. Oh, well, thank you. Well, come on, umpire. Your Columbia Phonograph dealer has it. The new Sound of Pleasure, Stereo One by Columbia. Number one in the wonderful world of sound. Just wait until you hear the beautiful sound of true three-dimension stereophonic high fidelity. It's a thrilling experience that makes all your records, stereo or regular, sound better. There's a complete selection of Columbia Stereo One phonographs, ranging from smart new portables to handsome single and twin-unit consoles, crafted like fine furniture. And there's a Columbia Stereo One phonograph for every room, for every budget, and for every listening need. No matter what you want in stereo, Columbia has it. And your Columbia phonograph dealer is headquarters for Columbia phonographs. Portables are priced as low as $24.95. And elegant console models start at the amazingly low price of $129.95. See them all. Hear them at your Columbia phonograph dealer. Uh, now, as I understand it, Granville, you play New York baseball. Well, we can play the Massachusetts game, but it just don't have the same pep. And we play strictly a fly game. You mean the batter ain't out if the ball is caught on the bound. That's right. Oh, my, we've been playing that way for years now. You must really think we're backwards out here in Doc. I don't think he intended any offense, Lindstrom. Well, maybe not. Uh, Shane, uh, now, Doc, huh? what about that uh, licorice ball? Oh, what about it? Well, it's Lem's best pitch. Do you Eastern fellas use it? Uh, no, not anymore. Well, how come? Well, it ain't really a rule, but uh, generally before a game, we agree that neither pitcher can chew licorice. Well, I think that's unfair. Oh, if you want to use a licorice ball, go ahead. It won't bother us none. Just messy, that's all. What's messy about a little licorice on a bowl? Lindstrom, if you'll hold your mouth for just a minute, there are some other things that should be settled first, and we'll get to them. But first of all, the game will be nine hands. I innings. Uh, huh? Uh, they call them innings now. Oh, all right. Nine innings. Three outs to a side per inning. Now, at the end of that time, the team of the most aces... The team of the most runs. All right, all right. Come on, get on with it. Uh, yes. Ah, now, now. Uh, Chadwick's newest rule book of baseball. I have it right here, and we shall read it. The batsman calls the pitch. That's what it says. He can call for a high ball, a low ball, or a middle ball. If the umpire decides the pitch was in the area called for, he shall rule it as a strike even though the batsman does not swing. Three strikes are out. Um, are there any questions? Well, not on that, but uh, what about that walk thing? Oh, the walk. Well, uh, I I'd like to explain that, Doc, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Yes. Well, you see, we found the game was dragging, so the association passed a rule that if the umpire calls nine unfair balls against a pitcher, the batsman can walk to first base and the next batter comes up. Oh, my, that, that sounds awful tough on the pitcher. Oh, they're even talking about cutting it down to eight balls next yeah, year. Excuse me just a minute, Jim. But Chester, don't just stand there in the door wiggling your fingers if, if you want to see Matt come on in. Well, I'm sorry, Doc. I'll uh, come out there, Chester. You go right ahead. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you, Matt. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, now, let me see. We will continue here. The, the, the pitcher shall release the ball no closer than 45 feet from home plate. His feet shall be together at the time of the pitch. The elbow shall be stiff, and the pitching hand shall not rise above the belt. Are there any questions? Yeah, Doc, I got a few questions, and they're all for Mr. Granville. Well, go ahead. Do you or your players ever bet on the games you play? Why, of course we do. Do your players ever bet against themselves? Well, what are you getting at, Marshal? Just answer my question. Well, we do not. I'm not talking about betting whether you win or lose. I know you've never lost a game. I'm talking about sucker bets. Why, you heard me turn down a sucker bet at that saloon. And the bet I offered was square. Yeah, I know. 
You offered to bet you'd score more than a hundred runs, and you said it good and loud in front of everybody. And made you look real honest. So after you left, your ringers could move in and clean the town. I swear, Marshal, I don't know what you're talking about. Chester, I want you to tell everybody here what you just told me. Uh, Well, these two gamblers are over at the Long Ranch right now, strangers in town. And they're taking all comers. The gamblers is given good odds that the All-Stars won't score more than 50 runs. Just about everybody in Dodge is betting they will. <laughs> well, I, I sure don't know who the gamblers are, but <laughs> they ain't very smart. Unless maybe they know something that I don't. Like what? If you and your boys are as good as you're supposed to be, you're the only ones who can make sure that you didn't score more than 50 runs. And it could just be that those gamblers are betting with your money. Hmm. Well, I, I'm not going to answer that, Marshal. But if you want to get rich fast, sell everything you got and take the bet there off. That's the last thing I'd do. But if I'm wrong, Mr. Granville, you'll have an apology from me before you leave town tomorrow. You better start thinking it up right now, Marshal. But if I'm right, you and your boys won't be leaving. <laughs> you're here. How's the game going? Oh, see there? Pretty bad. Them all stars just ain't no good at all. In the three innings they batted, Lem struck out seven of them. They ain't got a single run. How many runs for Dodge? Four. We sure didn't deserve them, and we're going to get more. There ain't nobody out, and that Granville ain't pitching the ball no worse near Willie Lynn. Oh, eight. I had to wait for an answer from St. Louis, or I'd have been here sooner. Did you find out anything about them gamblers? Yeah, plenty. Have you got them spotted? Yes, I have. Right on the edge of the crowd over there, the first base. See? Yeah, I see them. Let's watch this a minute. Oh, nine. Oh, yes, your face. Hey. See there? He walked Willie on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, who's this coming up? Well, it's one of them players I was telling you about that men from Gotham Four Dodge. I don't know his name. Tell me something, Chester. What? Don't these all-stars look to you like maybe they're scared? Well, they do look kindly nervous. Now, that's the first real hit we've had. Uh, that's a good one, all right. At least two bases. That should score Willie easy. Willie's stopping at third. Yeah, he can't make it home if he doesn't keep moving. So why would he stop? I don't know. But, like the third baseman's talking to him. Well, now, if that don't beat all that... Look, 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 look. Now he's coming on again. Look yeah. at that boy, run! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! I want to talk to Willie. Come on. Well, that was a good play, Willie. Yeah. Oh! Hello, Marshal. You always stop and talk to the baseman? Uh, oh, well, I... Look, Willie, there's something strange about the way this game is going. I want you to tell me what it is. Uh, I don't know what you mean. I think you do. Now, you tell me. Uh, all right. I promised I wouldn't, but... Well, them all-star boys is really scared. Afraid you'll get shot. What? Now, that's what the third baseman was telling me. There's two rifles pointed right at him from the, the loft of Wolford Speed Store. Right through that open window. Oh, yeah. No, they have a clean shot at every all-star player on the field. And any man that plays too good is as good as dead. Okay, Willie, thanks. What are you going to do, Mr. Dillon? Go after the two men in the loft? Mr. Dillon, you can't go up them outside stairs. You'd be walking right into rifle fire. Now, there's a ladder to the loft inside the store, Chester. I think I can surprise them. Oh, and in the meantime, you keep an eye on those two gamblers. And Willie... Yeah, Marshal? You get back to the other players like nothing happened, huh? Today, a great premium is placed on speed. Speed of transportation, communication, of automation. In keeping with today's accelerated pace, 
It's understandable that millions of Americans prefer to hear the events of the day via radio, the swiftest, most concise news medium of all. CBS News maintains its top reputation in the field of news reporting and commentary. Skilled newsmen in our central bureaus of CBS News constantly monitor their many sources of news in this country and abroad, so each broadcast will be accurate and up to the minute. In addition to the many news broadcasts heard each day on CBS Radio, weeknights, veteran CBS newsman Lowell Thomas continues to bring you the colorful brand of news commentary that's long kept him one of America's most familiar, most popular voices on the air. Make it a habit to hear Lowell Thomas and the many more broadcasts of CBS News right here on CBS Radio. like you drafted an army. No, sir. These are all volunteers. They seen you leave and knew what was up. So they just kept playing till they heard the shots. Then we come running. Let him come down, Marshal. We'll take care of him. All right. How about it, you? You want to try your luck against 18 men with baseball bats? No. I, I ain't running. you got to protect me, Marshal. Send him down, Marshal. Don't think I wouldn't like to. But most of you came here to see a real game of baseball played by men who make their living at it. Now, those two gamblers there and this hired gun and a dead one up here in the loft had a different idea. Don't you worry about the gamblers, Marshal. My boys have them. Good. Well, there's still time to start over and play a full game before dark, and I think you should get going. Any bets you made with these fellas won't hold. Now, how about it? All right, Doc. Is that agreeable with you, Lindstrom? Well, why not? And you, Grenville? Of course it is. Then what are we waiting for? Play ball! <laughs> Sure, I am anxious to find out how poor old Doc's feeling this morning. Yeah, so am I. He looked pretty worn out by the time it was over. 116 to 12. I was all wore out just watching them all start to keep running around the bases. Maybe he's not up yet. Now, please don't tease him, Mr. Dillon. I'm not going to tease him, Chester. Hey, Doc. Doc! Uh, what do you want? Uh, good morning, Doc. We just want to make sure you's all right, Doc. Why don't you two get back to your jail tendon and leave me alone? I don't stand there with your back to us, Doc. We're not going to laugh at you. Does it hurt much? Here, let's get that shade up and get some light in here. There we go. All right, now take this towel away. Oh, 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 uh, ain't that a beauty? My, <laughs> oh, my, I never seen so many colors. What, in these green and blue and purple and brown? Can you wow. see out of it at all? Uh, not yet. Well, I had no idea them foul balls was that deadly. Uh, how's the one on your head? Here, let me see. That's right here. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I just barely touched it. At least the skin ain't broke none. Yeah, it's quite a knob, though, Doc. I'm sure sorry. 
Why should you be sorry? Well, I shouldn't have laughed about that stovepipe hat. If you'd been wearing it, you'd have one less bruise. Is there anything at all we can do? No, no, it just takes time. Yeah. Well, we got to get our prisoners fed, Doc. I'm taking all three of them up to Hayes City this afternoon. But Chester will be here. And I sure will look in on you, Doc. Uh, Doc, I just got one thing to ask you. Uh, go ahead. Now that you're the proud possessor of Chadwick's newest rule book of baseball, uh, can Chester and I have your boys' book of games? Why, yes, if you really want. Oh, get out of here. Improved key side tune up the tune up in a can. Fill it up, sir? Yeah, regular's good. Say, that engine of yours sounds like real tired iron. Thanks. Improved case side tune-up. The tune-up in a can. You got a valve sticking, too. Oh, what do you get to a gallon? Not much. Improved case side tune-up. The tune-up in a can. Want a tune job? I haven't got time. You don't need time. How can a tune job not take time? Improved case side tune-up, mister. One can in your gasoline and one can in your oil will clean your motor, your carburetor, your plugs. The works. And case side tune-up will unstick those valves. Get you more power and smoother performance. Quicker starting, too. Okay, but how much? Dollar and a quarter a can. Results guaranteed or double your money back. Uh, would you start her up, please? <laughs> Still sounds lousy. I haven't added it yet. Improved case side tune-up. The tune-up in a can. <laughs> Smoke, produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Vic Perrin, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kern, Barney Phillips, Ralph Moody, Vic Perrin, and Harry Bartell. Farley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs> inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. <laughs>